the Arabian Racehorse Podcast with Debbie Burt and Stephen Molyneux. The Arabian Racehorse Podcast. I'm joined by Stephen Molyneux from Dubai. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Yeah, very well. How are things out there? Yeah, all good, thank you. Nice and quiet. <laughs> well, not for much longer. You'll be uh, you'll be kicking uh, off out there soon. Yeah, we're middle of August already, aren't we? So only a couple of months to go, and soon soon comes around. Yeah, it certainly does. Right. Well, today we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a catch up. We're going to look at the two group races that we've had, and uh, we'll be looking ahead to our upcoming race at Chepstow and um, talking about one or two of the horses which have impressed us throughout the season so far. But if we uh, Go over to Goodwood now. Obviously, Lady Princess continues to impress um, with what was her, I think, her eighth Group One win, and obviously her second win in the race. Um, obviously, you've, you've had a chance to rate and review that. What, what, how did you feel the the race panned out from from your perspective? Well, it was obviously as we spoke about beforehand. It was probably the the best renewal of the race that we'd seen. Um, the proven Group Class, obviously Group One class of of the likes of Lady Princess, obviously first class having won the. The Cahela Classic, and um, fairly rarely for the race, we had the Classic Generation re represented as well in the form of of Samla, who uh, acquitted himself very well. So on paper, you know, it was it was a top quality race. I don't think the way it was run necessarily led to us seeing um, a scintillating performance. You know, they they finished in a, in a in a little bit of a heat, but that's not to say that there still wasn't very you know, a lot of um, positives to be taken from from what we saw from the first three as you say Lady, Lady Princess can, continues to impress she was um, held up I'd imagine there might have been the odd moment of worry if you were Jim Crowley and maybe if you were following her as well um, Goodwood can be tricky in that respect but um, I think as soon as it looked as though he might be in a bit of trouble in terms of falling into the laps of horses that were coming back to him um, he was able to switch her and and that's her biggest weapon, isn't it? A good turn of foot on fast ground. And um, Goodwood was very much uh, becoming to that. Um, I suppose, for me, the, the slightly surprising element was, was the performance of Hatal. I know he's a multiple Group 1 winner, but um, as we said at the time, he'd been very well placed uh, to bag those Group 1 wins. And this was by far and away his biggest test. And he came through it with flying colours. I thought he travelled every bit as well as Lady Princess. Um, it looked as though he might you know, just got on stolen a length or two at a crucial stage, which would have made it tricky for Lady Princess, but um, um, certainly battled on well when headed. I, I felt the first two were a lot more superior than the rest of the field, and that includes Sam La, who has done nothing wrong as a, um, you know, as a French derby a horse, and um, I, I, you know, the fact that he came a couple of lengths clear of, of Jafar as well, again, that could have been perhaps on another day a little bit more. So I think the first three were very good um, and, and really the only disappointment for me was was probably first class who fell a long way short of replicating what he achieved in Dubai which again is no great shake to give uh, no great surprise sorry given that it was his first run since and he was obviously uh, switching in services so all in all a fairly straightforward race to assess the best Arabian in the world has beaten a horse who's got multiple group ones under his belt and um, a very promising sort in Samla who could over time, um, almost be the best of these. Yeah, and um, I think as as we discussed at the time, obviously that was Hatal's first attempt at a mile. Um, but as um, as I'd observed, looking back through his form, when he won the French Derby, that was the fastest time in the in the last ten years. And I, I don't have enough records to go back to say whether that was a track record for it, but it was certainly a, a very quick time. So you know, he clearly had the ability to, you know. It, because ob obviously in France, the races are usually run at a slightly different pace to ours, whatever breed of horse it is. So to, to turn that in um, as a four-year-old, you you hope that um, he'd certainly be able to produce something drop back to a mile. And, and one would assume that you'll be seeing him next. Um, if he doesn't go to, to the race at Longchamp for the Arabian World Cup, you know, he's certainly going to be one that you'll be expecting to see in, uh, in the dual crown in December. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he'll be... He'll be very much guaranteed to run over here. I'm just trying to think what um, you know, what sort of horses they'd have over here. Probably, I mean, Samud has been their, their flag bearer for a couple of years, but he's he's certainly getting on in years. And Hatal would be a, a very lively contender were he to come over here. And yeah, show good speed. I think the way the French races are running, he probably 
gives them a bit of speed, doesn't it? They're having to quicken at the end of their races, even though they're over further. So mm. uh, no surprise he handled the drop back in trip. And, you know, he's a six-year-old. He's definitely posted a career best effort there for me. And who's to say that now he's done it against the very best that he can't go and win one himself. So, yeah, whether they take in a long shot in October 1st or come straight over here in December, it's, it's a good time between races, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I'd imagine to see him in all those all those good races, although I know yes, management like to, uh, to sort of pick their own races, don't they, and, and win ones that they support. But I think this is this is definitely a horse that can uh, be a big player over here. And I, I don't know what the plans would be for for Lady Princess either. Obviously, she won the race last year. Maybe you you have a better idea as to what they hope to do with her. Uh, absolutely, I spoke to Thomas Forsey after the race, and uh, she's basically going to do the same as last year. So she'll go. Straight, straight back home to France to be prepared for the um, Arabian World Cup at the uh, end. Well, I think it's the beginning of October this year. And um, then from there, she'll be looking at Abu Dhabi, the Emir's sword. And he said, mm, possibly, maybe even we'll think of Dubai. We'll see how it goes um, for the Kahala Classic. So for her, that would be um, that would be interesting. A first run on on dirt. I don't think she's I don't think she's run at Poe in, in the winter. So that would be interesting. And uh, so, and I also spoke to um, Maxine Guillaume after the race about Sam La, and he felt that really the horse needed to come off a, a stronger pace, stronger earlier pace in the race, and it probably wasn't run to suit him. But I think as as a four year old, you know, I mean, he's come within um, less than two lengths of, of Lady Princess Jaffa. I think he'd had a few problems um, during his training out in um, in in, in uh, Doha. And so that was a first run, I think, um, with Francois Rowe. And I think that was probably a bit of an improvement. Yes, first class, a bit disappointing. I, I thought the sort of the key point at the race really for me was um, the cutaway at Goodwood, which is often the case um, because that opened the race up and it, it stopped that sort of concertinaing effect where um, where Lady Princess was in the pocket and it, it all opened up at that point. And, and um I think Hatal drifted a little bit towards the rail and, and the gap was there for get to go through if, if she had the speed to do it. And um, certainly as all post-race winning jockeys are, when I, Jim Crowley was like, oh, well, you know, she's she's got the speed for the gap. But she, you know, in this case, she is a horse with a turn of foot and um, and she certainly showed it, but couldn't quite shake Hatal off, which I think was uh, the most interesting thing for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a big performance from Hatal. Um, he was only rated 118 going into it. I know the... French handicapper only has him on about one twelve, well, has him on one twenty-two. I rated him one twenty-three. Um, those sort of pounds will get uh, discussed over the course of uh, the next few weeks. Maybe he'll need to go and do it again before he's justifying that. But uh, no, it was a another very very good renewal. The, the first six were the first six that we imagined. Unfortunately, the uh, the UK trained horses, um, you know, on paper they they probably weren't good enough to. To finish any closer than they did, led home by Valkyries. But um, yeah, the, the right horses very much came to the fore, and it was a, another excellent renewal of the race. Mm. And um, looking ahead now to the race we, we've just had at the weekend, the Royal Cavalry Vermont International Stakes. Um, as we'd hoped when we when we'd previewed it, uh, the first two came clear, and then there was a bit further daylight back to to the fourth horse. So I think really it was pretty much as we expected. You'd, you'd want to see horses rated above 100 um, being superior in this sort of race. And, and the win by at Clear Laugh Bar, given that she um, broke the, the track record winning the prep, um, she's confirmed that form, hasn't she? She looks like a horse with a, with a future. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you say, her and Fatina came clear, maybe not as far clear as, as I envisaged, but full credit to Abaya Athbar, who, um, despite the fact she's an eight-year-old, probably has this sort of big run in her, doesn't she, at least once a year, six way along the fast ground where she can um, hear her who's rattle and she likes to get on with it. Um, but perhaps I, I no think, great... Sorry, I, I just think with Abia Athba, she is super ground dependent. Um, yeah. All her best form comes on good to firm. The Haydock race, that good runner at Goodwood two two years ago behind Ebraz when she was, you know, pushing for, for fourth place, which was, you know, remarkable for, for our uk horses in in that kind of competition um and funnily enough actually just just to talk a little bit about that um julian smart who obviously knew plenty about jaffa her sire um and also some of the younger jaffas when they first hit the racetrack i know he felt that 
one of the reasons why he hadn't done well as a stallion in France is because the ground was too soft. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, you know, you can definitely say that, you know, it, if anything, she's got a different rating on good to firm than she has on good or softer, you know, when we talk about turf and dirt, dirt ratings, but she certainly does perform a, a above her general ability when she hits good ground, uh, good to firm ground. Yeah, it definitely does. And she's certainly worthy of being rated in the mid nineties as a, as a result of that. And that gives a good guide as to what uh, Eccle and Afbar and Fatina have, have probably achieved in, in, in pulling a couple of lengths clear. I think they were valued for a bit more as well. They, it was a bit of a, I know it was a sprint race, but it was a bit of a sit and sprint in within a sprint, really. Um, and the clear lap bar, as you say, is just proving to be very progressive. She looked a, a good bit bigger than Fatina on the, on the TV. I'm sure you can confirm as much having been there and perhaps as a result has a bit more scope than, than that horse who was, uh, I wouldn't say exposed, but had been beaten a couple of times in group company in France. So we knew she wasn't coming over here as as a genuine superstar as, as we'd normally see from the French horses but she's a very solid group performer in her own right and um, full credit to Eclair Lafbar who's just continued to progress in big chunks from, from one run to another and um, another career best here I think she'll be probably rated around about 107, 108 on the back of this victory and um, doesn't put a million miles away from the main protagonists, bearing in mind the Phillies allowance that she's going to get should she run in the UK derby a little bit later on at Doncaster. Absolutely. Um, and what you were saying about Fatina, absolutely right. She's actually a very slight filly. Um, yeah. But, you know, she's, she's definitely got a bit more growing to do and a bit more filling out to do. I, when I was editing the photos after the race, you know, there's a, a noticeable difference in physique between her and a clear Lafba. And I mean, a clear Lafba is pretty narrow herself, you know, but I, I did think that... Um, you know, there'll, there'll be more to come from Fatina. I, when, I, when I spoke to um, Kevin Jose, the uh, overall manager for the Royal Cavalry's Horses in France after the race, he said that she'll probably be, obviously they're going to have a chat and see what happens and, and things can always change up, you know, a couple of days when you get your horse home. But um, at that at that point, he feared, figured that it would really be a case of she'll have a break be allowed to have a bit of a rest and then go off to the goal for a, a winter campaign. So you could well see her with someone like Ibrahim Al Hadrami out there, or maybe they'll keep her with um with Freddie Sanchez and just pop her over for a couple of races. But um certainly the the cavalry's um focus now is going to be more on quality horses rather than a, a, a broad spectrum of, of runners. So um it'll be interesting to see how their um their program develops. Um and I think for me, that uh, great to see a Bia Afba run a great race on on fast ground to confirm, as you know, what I've always believed, which is she's better on fast ground. But um, a good performance, I thought, in fourth for Zayn Anka Centuri, and he was beaten a, a long way in in his previous runs. And and uh, obviously, after two years off, it's it's taken this time to to get him fit. But going back to breeding again, he's by De Hess, a horse that won this race three times. So you know not on now that he's certainly got the edge um i think pete was looking at the uh there's a handicap at lingfield um later on this month which will be his his next target yeah he'll stick in that as well he's rated 85 so he'll he'll not go above the uh certainly won't go above the 87 that would qualify him for that race but as he said he he's just needed a few runs maybe to get fit and just sort of get back used to racing again really but again he seemed to enjoy himself just being allowed to to, to bowl along up front there and um you know there were, none of the none of the sex that were were disgraced they, they pretty much finished in rating order and you know val Keys and paramar angel have have run their races as well and um you know prize money all the way down to to sixth place so hopefully at least paramar angel paid the petrol for the Dallas thomas rule petrol is very expensive nowadays well indeed and and actually i mean you know as you say, they pretty much run to their ratings, you know, which is good for you from your perspective. But I mean, I think probably Bow Keys, she ran such a good race at Goodwood. You'd think that maybe that might have taken a bit of a the edge off of her not being. Um, but with Paramore Angel, we we I'd mentioned that I'm not entirely convinced that he wants it the ground too quick at his age now. Um, and those sort of results back it up. But but as you say, you know, they've run to their ratings. Um, all credit to you, really, Stephen, in this case. <laughs> I not go that far. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not often the handicapper gets praised, so I'd take it if I were you. Um, oh, if, we, yeah. <laughs> uh, if we move on now to um, our forthcoming race um, at Chepstow, uh, this is obviously being filmed way before declarations, but I think we can safely say that it, it's likely that all the horses 
barring some other kind of stable orientated misfortune are all going to run. Um, so if we, and also this ties in nicely with looking at some of the races that we've already had this year. Um, going through them, uh, who would be your, your standout pick in, in this race, if indeed there is a standout or if they're more closely matched? Well, I'm hoping there's no standout. Um, <laughs> there's, there's the obvious obvious threat, I suppose, is the best way of describing it, of um, the, the lighter race horses coming in and making a mockery of their initial handicap mark. And I suppose Zikeda Zayin and, and Al-Hatab, probably even Al-Ghazal to some degree, they they will fulfil that brief. Um, Zikeda Zayin, she's obviously had the, the two starts so far and found it tough at Windsor. Um, behind a clear lap bar and um, I thought she still looked very much a work in progress last time as well um, behind the Jane so quite whether she can just a couple of weeks on from that then go straight into a into a handicap against hardened horses and and prove her worth I would I would have a slight doubt I wouldn't be completely surprised in the course of time were she to be better than 57 but it might just take a couple of runs for her to do that um, similarly um, Al, Al Hatab, who's just looked, um, I wouldn't say slow, but probably just a slow learner more than anything. Um, obviously, yeah, he was behind um, Lejane last time as well, came off the bridle quite a long way out. and He seemed to be very much learning on the job. He's only a four year old, obviously bred to be more of a handicapper than, than the horse that's going to go win a maiden anyway. So at least, at least those two have got better chances now that they're in handicaps. Um, but I suppose the one they've, they've got to got to beat really he's going to be the old boy Al Joa here who's just really held his form remarkably well as a 13 year old and uh, this is his grade um, wherever he finishes you'd imagine the winner is going to be in and around him and um, not inconceivable that he can uh, bag another victory particularly seeing as though he handles the, the fast ground very well I know you're due for a bit of rain thankfully and maybe chaps they will pull terms softer than most race courses in the UK, but um, if conditions are in his favour, then then he's probably the one they've they've all got to beat again. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think Aljo Her is sort of all right. So I, I know he's trained in the, the same, well, only a couple of miles away actually from Delaton, um, Steve Blackwell. But he's very much turning into a bit of a noble athlete, isn't he? As he as he ages, you know, he's um he holds his form very well. He's got a great re relationship with um, Lewis Saunders, who I believe um, if if they go, he'll be in the in the saddle again. Um, and of course, you know, talking about horses with scope to improve at a reasonably lightly raced, I think we also have to look at Aloof, um, Steve's other horse. Um, I wasn't there at Brighton when she won um, first time, but I believe Charlie will ride her if she goes. And um, it, it, I'd, I'd say that's probably a good chance for her too. She's again um, off a reasonable mark and, and she looks a horse that could, having had the experience of winning, she, she might decide she enjoys it and goes on from there. Well, yeah, that'll be the, the main hope. Um, obviously very closely matched with, with Al Jawa here based on that. And um, 42, she won off that day. 47, uh, 45, beg your pardon, she'll run off at Chepstow. I mean, the thing with these low-grade horses is is to be not not to be too harsh on them, really, uh, because they can they can lose their form as, as quickly as they find it, really. So it's, you know, you are talking pounds, a couple of pounds here and there from, from one run to the next. And, and that brings in Bin Ali as well, who... He's well capable of bouncing back. Um, his mark has fallen a little bit more than some of these. I mean, he was third in that uh, in that Brighton race, for example, but now found himself six pounds lower. And we shouldn't forget Heritage Vidal as well, who thought ran very well last time. So uh, there's, a, there's a good few of these that are in, in pretty good form. So it does certainly make for, for one of the more competitive handicaps we've had so far this season. And touch wood with the 11 entered, we might have one of the biggest fields as well. Well, it, it looks very much that way. And um, certainly, I was going to say, move on to the Heritage Horses. Obviously, um, the win, I think, possibly was a little bit of a surprise um, for the team at home. But um, all credit to to the owners and also to the trainer for, for sticking by these two. Um, they've always looked like, you know, that given this sort of grade of race, that they might well be able to progress. And um, certainly, uh, on the basis of that evidence, Possibly maybe they were just suited by the surface at Savile, a bit better than some of the others. Um, mm -hmm. I know Steve was a bit worried about Al Jawahir facing the, the kickback there, um, but he still ran very credibly to be placed. So, um, I, you know, I think it looks a really competitive race, actually. I mean, and you've also got, albeit that possibly, you know, at 10, he maybe passes best, but Conker's a course and distance winner near enough. So on a couple of occasions, it, it'll be certainly um, 
more than competitive. Sorry, my phone keeps pinging in the background there. It's <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, um, should be a race to look forward to. And as you say, quite possibly, if they all declare, it will be our biggest field of the season. Yeah, it's only well. I mean, Heritage Vidal's gone up six pounds for that Southern win. Like, like you said, it um, was a, a tricky, a tricky race. Obviously, a, a race that was switched off the turf because of the, the warm weather. And from the races that I've seen on the all weather in England of late, you know, the heat does have an effect to make it a bit more testing. So it would have been a, a bit of a slog for these Arabians. And, and Heritage Vidal, Vidal did have that race won. I thought from a good long way out, uh, a good positive ride from Rianne Ingram and. Uh, Heritage with Dale, but I was always holding Al Jawa here. Um, whether those tactics can be as easily pulled off at Cheps, though, particularly if the ground turns, that would be a slight doubt. But then on the plus, plus side, you know, Heritage Vidal has, has now won over half a mile further. So stamina is certainly not going to be an issue. Um, and Heritage Valentino took a step in the, in, in the right direction as well, back in third. So if they can continue to sort of Keep going the right way. Um, because the one doubt with Heritage Vidal would be the long absence and now having to go and do it again. Uh, whereas Heritage Valentino has, has at least put a couple of runs together. So uh, yeah, it should be it should be very competitive. And um, let's just hope the weather stays and we've not got a um, a completely different type of race to the ones that we've been used to seeing so far this season. Yeah, it's very difficult to judge. I had a look at the the forecast this morning and. Um, who knows? It's thunderstorms, and with thunderstorms, they can you know pop up anywhere. And you know, half a mile down the road, it's bone dry. So um, it's going to be uh, probably difficult to assess um, exactly how much of an effect that's going to have. And also, they'll have been watering at Chapstow too, so that comes into play as well. And um, but we'll you know we'll just have to see how it goes. And uh, just now moving on to um, some of the races that we didn't um, cover during during the our, our little absences this this summer for various reasons. The the, the horses that you've um, seen so far. I mean, we we briefly mentioned Lejeune. She certainly looks like um, a horse that's going to be capable of progressing further. I think probably that's going to be her last run, and unless something pops up later on. But um, what did what did you make of her as she's progressed throughout the season? She's yeah, she's just looked very green, really, hasn't she? She's looked one of the um, the, the, the bigger three-year-olds, I suppose, um, with, with scope to, to progress as she uh, gains experience and, uh, and as she grows physically. Um, obviously, her first two runs at, uh, at Windsor and Wolverhampton, she came up against very good AFBAR horses. Um, I don't think she necessarily took a step forward from her debut to that second run and, and probably more than anything benefited from an easier race when when winning at Windsor the last day. So, um, yeah, she's going the right way. Uh, I note I noticed in your press release that Phil sort of had the caveat that she might have gone up a long way in the weights before saying that he, he wasn't going to run her again. Maybe a mark of 75 will, will persuade him to give her one more run. But I would say, you know, that giving her more time to, to fill out is it, probably more in his mind than trying to bag another handicap win. So, yeah, she's uh, one of the nicer young, youngsters we've seen and um, hopefully she, she does have a a chance to progress um here in this country uh, here in the uk next year mm, and, and i mean that that's a very pertinent point phil doesn't tend to over the race his three-year-old she's had her three runs she's got a handicap mark and she's won so it would probably yeah. you know things they only really went to i mean they knew you know when i spoke to him earlier in the year he was thinking of drawing stumps after two runs um it was just a, the quick ground and back on turf that enticed him back he, he definitely feels that she doesn't want to run on on artificial surfaces and and i know john elliot is of the same opinion so i think she's certainly going to be um a turf horse uh for next year and and, and it would take a, a lot to to bring her out again i think for for this season um another obviously another three-year-old that's that's looked quite interesting has been also one of phil's is kafu afbar um he uh he won obviously um at wolverhampton but was a, a really quite disappointing at Doncaster behind Rebel and and Rebel is is clearly um looks at certainly at, probably you know it's not not as highly rated as it clear but certainly you know he's unbeaten and he's done nothing wrong what, what did you think about Doncaster race yeah, was, um I mean any race in which Alma Booba runs it's it's quite reliable really because she she uh, turns up and gives her running every time and, and she did so once again at, at Doncaster and finishing second and Rebel Afar rather readily brushed her aside. So she's obviously 
um, quite a, an interesting horse going forward. You'd imagine that he will probably have options in Dubai or Saudi, looking at the, at the winter programme, Rebel Athbar, and whether we see him too many times in the UK again would be debatable. But, you know, he fits the brief of, of many of the Athbar horses we've had in the UK in recent years, that they have a, a very nice grounding in, in, in the UK, and then they go over and be very competitive um, in the UAE. So hopefully um, Rebel Athbar going forward can be uh, that sort of horse again. Um, Kafu Athbar was in that race, um, probably just, well, I think there was an excuse. I think Phil might have said that the horse wasn't right for whatever reason. Um, but he'd be worth another chance. Certainly was only a couple of lengths behind our Cleal Athbar earlier in the season. And, you know, it's not easy for the three-year-olds in the handicaps taking on their elders anyway. They are conceding experience and um, physical improvement. So perhaps a run that came too soon. It was his fourth of the campaign as well in a, a relatively quick, quick quick succession. So I think plenty of reasons for that performance to be uh, readily confined to the bin. And whether we see Kafu Athbar again this season or not, you know, again, he could be a horse that, that heads out to uh, to sunnier climbs and does pretty well um, from sort of November, December onwards. Mm. And um, we also had uh, entries in for our derby, the UAE President's Cup, um, UK Arabian Derby at Doncaster in September. We've obviously touched on Rebel and at Cleal, who both hold entries for that. Um, just looking down the, the list of entries, is there anything there that, that leaps out at you at this stage? Well, Azadi Star would be the one that I'd be most familiar with from, from the entries that we've, from the very good entries that we've, we've got from France. Um, his form obviously ties in very closely with Sam Law, having finished second, just a short head behind, I think it was, in the French Derby. He did very well in the UAE, winning a couple of legs for the Triple Crown. And he's um, he's a horse that's got a bit more size and scope about him than, than I've seen from a young Arabian for, for a good while. He's quite a quite a lengthy horse. He's uh, he seems very honest and very genuine. You know, they they ride him for a turn of foot. And when I sort of, I mean, he's he's owned by Halal Al Alawi, who, who's sent horses over for the UK Derby um, before. So it was kind of always expected that he would hopefully headline really the the Arabian Derby entries and he, he duly does but not by a massive amount I mean we've got Moshrif in there who, who had an excellent campaign in in Doha over the winter and a couple of other French horses who, who may or may not turn up who are um you know rated in the hundreds and you know still very much on the upgrade as you'd hope from the four-year-old so it looks like being a very good race and then of course you've got whatever Phil decides to run in in, in the Athbar horses so yeah very a, a very good race and hopefully at least two or three of the French horses make the trip over. Yeah, well, we'll uh, and also um, our first entry from um, from Poland, although the horse is actually technically trained in Czechoslovakia, oh, sorry, Czech Republic. Um, so it will be, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to previewing that. It looks like it could uh, be one of our, our better derbies by the by the looks of things. Um, that wraps it up for, for this week. We'll um, we'll be back to to review the racing and, and we'll be looking forward then to uh, the, the race we have at Lingfield. Yeah, busy end to the, the season, hopefully a few more chances for horses and uh, uh, our best races, you know, a couple of them have we've had, but we've still got Doncaster and of course another great race at Haydock, so plenty still to look forward to.